Hey friends, this is Scott Hanselman. I wanted to give this a try. Uh, this is the beginning, uh, hopefully the first of many, of a series of videos on all the stuff that they didn't teach you in school when you decided to become a programmer, an engineer, a developer, or some kind of techie. Uh, I think that there's a dearth of computer science history, and sometimes they'll just sit down and they'll say, hey, let's learn how to program and there's all this little weird stuff that I don't tell you. So I thought I'd do a bunch of little small videos. This is a test. If you like this, let me know in the comments what other topics you'd like me to cover. So what I want to talk to you about is carriage return line feed. What's a carriage? Who's feeding it lines? Where did it come from? Why should I care? Uh, how does that relate to text files and Git and Windows and Linux and Mac? So here's what I'll tell you. So I'm on a Windows machine right here and uh, I'm sitting at my desktop. I happen to be using the Windows terminal. Your terminal might look like this and that's fine. What I've done is I've just gone to the start menu and I've hit the Windows key and run and typed in CMD. That's fine. Uh, and if I go out here and I'll CD to my desktop and I'll say copy con test.txt. You can try this along. I'm actually copying from the console to a file. This is the same as when you copy file 1 to file 2, except the first file I'm copying from is the console, which is the screen here. I'm actually copying from the keyboard to file.txt. I'm going to type in A, B, C, enter, and then hit control Z, and it'll say one file copy, just like you copied it yourself. And I'll say then type file.txt and I'll say notepad file.txt and hit enter and notepad will pop up and if you're in a recent version of Windows 10 in the lower right hand corner here it's going to say Windows CRLF what's that about well CRLF for a lot of you you realize means carriage return line feed so what's a carriage who's feeding it lines what's the deal well the idea is on a typewriter or on a computer or mainframe that talked to a typewriter or talked to some kind of a printer, there was a carriage that you would have on the side. The carriage is what is the thing that is carrying the paper. And you would get to the end of a line and you would push on the carriage to return it. You would push on this carriage return. It would go and that would come back to the other side. And then you would turn this knob that would then feed the line. So carriage return line feed are control characters that appear in a text file to program or to to insist to the printer that it should return the carriage and then feed the line. Here's where things become interesting. On Windows, text files even today in 2020 have uh, a carriage return and a line feed after each line. On a Linux machine, they have just a line feed after each line, and on a Mac, they have just a carriage return on each line. So, why should you care? Well, things get a little bit interesting when you start moving files in between systems. So, I'm here and I can't see that. You see how I can't see it's a CRLF? There's no, there's no enter key. There's no X or big number or thing that says, yeah, there's a there's an enter there. So how can we visualize that? How can we see that? Well, I've, I've got an application on my machine called HexDump. You can go and Google for HexDump. If you have Linux, you already have this file. If you have Windows, you can go and download it on HexDump for Windows. And I'm just going to say HexDump file.txt. And I see 61, 62, 63, which are the ASCII codes for ABC. I see 0D, 0A. 0D is 13 and 0A is 10. How do I know 0A is 10? 1, because it's in hex. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. And A is hex for 10. So 0D, that's CR, and 0A, that's 10, or LF. I can go over and look at an old ASCII code chart. ASCII is the American Standard Code for Information Exchange. It's an old, old thing that's still with us today. And you can see right there, carriage return is 13 and line feed is 10. And if I go up and look at ABC, that's 61, 62, 
and 63. 63. A, B, C, carriage return, line feed. That's what I got when I made that file. Now, here's where things get interesting. What if I were to get something from GitHub? Maybe I'm a programmer. For example, I will go and grab this readme file from github.com slash shanselman crlf example so i'm going to grab the url for that i'm just going to copy paste it into the clipboard there and i'm going to come out here and i'm going to say git clone and i'm going to paste that and clone that all right i'm going to go into that folder and there's my readme file and i can go and look at that file and there it is it's got a couple of lines we can do the hex dump trick and we can see we've got CRLF example, carriage return line feed, carriage return line feed. Looks like there's one here and one there. There's line one, then there's line space two, and then an ending carriage return line feed. That's interesting. But if we go over to Ubuntu, which is a different operating system. Here I'm using the Windows subsystem for Linux on my machine, but you can use any Ubuntu machine that you have lying around. And I say git clone. And I do the exact same thing. I'm going to get the same file. Okay, there it is. And I'll look at it. And I'll say hex dump. And I see little CRLF example. Line feed line space one line feed line space two line feed what's going on there well text files on linux only do line feed if i was on a mac it would be a carriage return so how is this happening if i go over and look at windows and i type in git config dash dash get core dot auto crlf so that is set to true inside of windows and it's not set in my ubuntu world well if we take a look at what the setup looks like when you very first install git it says hey i'll check out things windows style meaning it will lie to you and it will commit things unix style where when you commit a text file the CRLF will be converted to LF. So what that means is for cross-platform projects, Git is lying to you. It's putting text files on your Windows machine and holding them on the disk with carriage returns and line feeds. But the reality is when it saves it in Git and it stores it online and it's everywhere in the world except your Windows machine, that it is a line feed. Now, if I wanted to go and use a more sophisticated editor, for example, I wanted to go and say code dot and then use Visual Studio Code to open up that folder, I can open up the readme.txt and I can see in the lower corner here the choice of CRLF or LF. And you'll notice, of course, that the file doesn't look any different. If I go and hit LF, I hit save, I switch back here and I say hex dump. Suddenly now we are in LF. Most code editors are smart about that stuff. The new notepad in Windows 10 is smart about that. Visual Studio is smart about that. Visual Studio Code is smart about that. So our great national nightmare is mostly over. But you should be aware. You should be aware. If you open something in an old text editor and things look weird and they're all on one line and you don't know what's going on, make sure that you check your line endings. Make sure that you are conscious of what your Git setting is set to and make sure that you don't open up something in a code editor that is not line ending aware and then it doesn't accidentally switch all your line endings without letting you know that. We are one-fifth of the way through the 21st century and we are still thinking about old Smith Coronas and old printers with carriages and line feeds. They are with us today. For the most part, we've standardized on just line feed, but now Windows Notepad and Windows in general is smart about that. But now it's something for you to think about because when you are 
debugging a problem, confused about something going wrong with your code, you might want to just think about are you being conscious about your carriage returns and your line feeds? So that's a little thing that they didn't teach you in school. If you want to see more videos about what they didn't teach you in school, please let me know in the comments. Thanks. Oh, and subscribe. That's a thing that you're supposed to say when you have a YouTube. And then they point down here and they say, click the subscribe button.